Paula, can you please check if there is someone outside and can just usher them in? Yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Good afternoon, um, friends. I am extremely delighted to uh, invite you and welcome you to the second Brown Bag Lunch organized by the G20 Global Land Initiative. For those who are not familiar with the G20 Global Land Initiative, this is an initiative was started during the Saudi Arabia presidency of G20 in 2020. And UNCCD was asked to host the secretariat or the initiative coordination office of that. The coordination office started working in April 2022, and currently we are starting our activities in various domains. And Brown Bag Lens is one of those activities through which we communicate. Many of you, probably most of you, may have al already heard about Chat GPT. Can I just have a show of hand as to is there anybody who who is not using Chat GPT now? There are close to eighty participants so online, or one hundred and twenty participants online as well. They can also raise hands and show if there is. Uh, um, but I'm very happy that everyone is already using ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT is going to change all our lives um, in ways uh, which we don't expect, but hopefully positively. Over the last four days, we, the G20 team, was doing a training on communication, including how ChatGPT can be used to enhance our communication and we have um, Mr. Sunil Prabhagar, who is an expert, a technology enthusiast, um, visiting Bourne. So we thought we will take that opportunity to present a session on chat GPT and how it is going to change work life um, to all the audience. So uh, Sunil has um, over 30 years of experience in all range of technologies, specialties to look for new technologies and how to help people use modern technology to improve their work life. So over to you, Sunil. Hello, good evening all. So I'm Sunil, I'm coming, uh, coming from India and uh, uh, my area is uh, that uh, I am focusing on idea uh, to train people, especially in or connecting people to the technology. And I, I'm engaged in training people in uh, utilizing the available technology in a better way to work better and uh, to increase their productivity, to increase their uh, output and everything. And uh, today we are going to uh, uh, familiarize, that means the use of chat GPT or uh, to uh, this uh, in a one hour time, I will show you how to use it effectively. That uh, window effectively because it's a very popular thing. Uh, I think uh, it bagged around one million subscription in just six days. That much popular around the world. And uh, let us uh, start to talk about it. And uh, ChatGPT is actually an LLM, large language model. It's an AI program. And what is an AI? A is actually, it's a collective name for the related technologies that uh, a computer system that you can use to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. It's a collective name. Then what is ML, machine learning, is also a subset of A or subfield of A, which is broadly defined as the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior, where you can train a machine with some data and get uh, uh, output accordingly. And what AA can do for you, especially the people working in various organizations, including the international organizations, AA can do a lot for you. It can improve your efficiency. It can enhance decision-making. It can uh, personalize the learning and uh, development uh, segment. 
and uh, it can increase the collaboration. You can uh, do the risk, risk management in a better way, and uh, you can you can improve your customer service, and uh, you can have the enhanced data security. Also, a lot of things you can depend the AI technology. AI, as I said earlier, it is not a single technology. It is a collection of technology, name given to as collection of technology. But today we are limiting our talk to the uh, LLMs. That is a particular LLM. There are a lot of other LLMs like uh, birth by Google, then uh, 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 one other by DeepMind, by Sparrow by DeepMind, a lot of, and uh, uh, Google recently came with uh, the BART, a new uh, technology similar to that of ChatGPT. And uh, we are actually limiting our uh, today's session only on ChatGPT. And uh, it's a AI powered chatbot. This uh, developed based on the GPT-3 first, but now they are doing GPT-4. And GPT, it's owned by OpenAI. And GPT is actually uh, stands for the Generative Pre-trained Transformers. That means it can generate something, generate usually, usually generate text. It is pre-trained with a lot of data, data up to 221, because uh, it cannot go beyond the 221 data because it is trained up to the data available in 221. 221. 2021, 2021, not 221, 2021. And uh, 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 it is actually trained. So the GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained uh, Transformers. And uh, this is an LLM, large language model. And this is the technology behind that GPT. They are using GPT in behind them. And uh, uh, other, I already told you that other LLMs are BERT, MUM, uh, Lambda, BART, all these were owned by Google. And Sparrow is another one owned by DeepMind. And uh, this chat GPT or GPT is uh, GPT family is owned by OpenAI. And uh, it can be used for several things. It can simplify concepts. That means if you have a uh, big academic document, research document, then if you find it difficult to read it, you can put it in the chat GPT and uh, request chat GPT to, to simplify it for you and uh, uh, convert it into a simple language. Then it can assist you to ask questions for an interview. You can, uh, you can use this window to prepare for an interview. You can uh, role play chat GPT. That means you can uh, convert the chat GPT as an HR manager and he will ask questions for you and you can prepare with chat GPT. And uh, it enables content writers and journalists to write faster. And uh, you can quickly summarize articles. You can put a uh, 100 page articles and uh, ask chat GPT to take summarize it to in a one page, single page. And uh, you can suggest eye-catching headings. You can request chat, chat GPT for a document to get a good, good headings. You can, but the important thing is that don't relay it always because it can give you wrong answers. So always remember to check with the answer provided by chat GPT because it's only a program trained with a lot of data. The data can be wrong. So the answer may, can, can also be wrong. So uh, is always, you keep it in your mind that always check with your result, but you can have a framework of material from ChatGPT. You need to recheck it again before uh, using it. And, uh, and what is actually the thing that you need to keep in your mind while uh, using ChatGPT? It is actually prompting. Generally in uh, the technical world, they call it as prompt engineering. That the engineering or the technology or the art of writing good prompts for ChatGPT. So the answer or the response from ChatGPT generally depends upon the prompt you are providing to it. If your prompts are good, if your prompt is communicating in a good way, then you can expect a good answer or good response from ChatGPT. So there is an anatomy for these prompts. If you, if, if you can... Uh, uh, use this kind of anatomy, use this, this technique, it is possible to get good results from that GPT. So the, you need to be creative when making a prod that is more signif significant and uh, you can have, you can use this window to two major things. You can use chat GPT for consulting information and you can use chat GPT to execute task that I will explain it. The next slide, this is an example for consulting information, how to fade out audio while editing a video in Canva. This is, you're asking a question and ChatGPT just like search engine, ChatGPT will give you the answer, how to do it. 
it is that is actually you are consulting for an information. And the same time, you can give a task, write an email uh, draft that tells users that the next subscription payment is the next week. So it will give you a good uh, email. And you can even uh, uh, go for, you can tell the tone that is to be used in that email. It can be professional, normal, or for formal, or uh, what you call this uh, in a, uh, maybe in the, some humorous manner or whatever it may be. You can have different variants for that and variables for that. Then we can select like a friendly, playful, professional, elegant, bold, uh, minimal, nostalgic, futuristic. You can have variables like this to define the tone that you want and uh, you can emulate other also. Not for all others, but for some great others in the past. For example, you can give uh, instruction to ChatGPT to write a poem, eight line poem on love. At the same time, you can uh, request ChatGPT to write in the style of William Wordsworth. It will write it in the same style of William Wordsworth, convert it to the same William Wordsworth. But each time, ChatGPT is capable of remembering your questions, your inputs. So each time you need not to tell everything, but you can keep on modifying it by just iterating with the new, new, new prompts, newer prompts. So you can just refine your results with, by iterating the window. Okay, I can uh, show you the basic uh, anatomy of a uh, chat GPT prompt. This is only a basic one, but you can modify it further for according to your use. Uh, this is actually a task for writing five YouTube video titles on salads in the style of Gordon Ramsay. Okay, so it can actually write, you can define the quantity. You need five titles and you can define the content. I need a YouTube video titles and you can mention the subject. I need not on salads and you can have the style or aesthetic in the style of and the other genre you can define. This is the uh, good way to uh, write a prompt that you need a context, you need a role. If you are using ChatGPT for a role play, you need to define role, define place. So everything you need to provide in a structured manner, well-structured manner. If you are successful in providing this information, in a well-structured manner, your response will be good. Further, you can refine it by iterating it with uh, further instructions. So I, at this point, uh, I will uh, switch my this screen and we'll go to the real screen, the chat GPT screen, and we'll uh, show you with uh, some real examples. I wait for some minute. Okay, so I have already used that thing, right? Five, tube, uh, five YouTube video titles on salads in the style of the golden dance. Okay, okay. I am actually repeating this thing again to show you. One second. I'm repeating it for you. Sensational salad secrets and wilt. Request it for five, it will give you, yield you five. So look at this thing. It is repeating the name of Gordon Ramsay in everything, every title. So I can instruct further. Please remove the name. Gordon Ram say from the titles. Okay. So just remove that title. You can act accordingly. And it can act as a role player. I can show you in one example uh, where 
you can uh, tell chat gpt you are like hr manager for un and act accordingly then prepare some questions for a particular job thing and uh, it will act as an hr manager and you can act, uh, request uh, uh, chat gpt to, to role play a doctor and you need to ask questions accordingly i i will show you an example i want to act you as a doctor here to reduce the time actually using uh so already typed one i want you to act as a doctor and come up with creative treatments for illness or diseases you should be able to recommend conventional medicines herbal remedies and other natural alternatives you will also need to consider the patient's age lifestyle history when providing your recommendation and my first suggestion is after the all these conditions i am giving my first suggestion is come up with a treatment plan that focuses on holistic healing methods for an elderly patient suffering from arthritis so i am requesting for it <laughs> okay there is already <laughs> telling that i am an ai model and uh, i can give them it can act as but it can act as a doctor it is giving responses as per my questions these are the things and it is speaking even in a doctor's language <laughs> and if you tell chat gpt to act as a lawyer it will reply in the lawyer's language okay <laughs> okay so this often happen uh, you can stop generate things uh, yeah and it is also remembering you please note that you need to consult a healthcare professional before using all these things but every time i will told you that uh, every time you need to recheck with the answers provided by uh, the chat gpt and uh, all these people are actually uh, almost uh, most of the people are actually working with the un and uh, you are actually all I mean, all almost all the times you will be engaged with the preparing documents documents for several use maybe a document uh, maybe a memorandum of association or a document to be submitted to a government a document to be uh, submitted to some other agency uh, or a partnership document and uh, in such case uh, i will uh, show you an example which is specific to un where you can use with the chat gpt i have already prepared one and look at this thing i am defining the role first you are the chief scientist of unccd <laughs> defining the role and we are holding a 16th conference of parties of unccd and government of india wants to a cop uh, decision mandating restoration of 100% of all decommissioned mines to initiate effective restoration by 2030 and complete restoration by 2040 based on previous cop decisions and language used in that please prepare a draft decision for the consideration of cop <laughs> this is often used by you and uh, let us wait for the result see it is making the draft decision title is given the title accelerating the restoration of decommissioned mines you see the language the conference of the parties <laughs> okay it's mentioning the number and it is using some statistics <laughs> okay <laughs> is building that response you are actually spending a lot of time to prepare such documents in un but this can be done very easily using the chat here we need to here we will get a draft but every time keep in your mind again recheck it it will give wrong answer it will give you some wrong information but recheck it but will it will reduce your workload for me you can think in that way okay 
so that you, you can dedicate your uh, remaining time to more uh, good task or other task. Okay, so we can further iterate uh, this thing. We can further iterate this thing. I am actually uh, iterating with uh, further other prompt. I'm iterating with other prompt. This is very good. However, please add a reference to the UN General Assembly resolution to the decade of ecosystem restoration and G20 global initiative and in reducing land degradation and enhancing conservation of terrestrial uh, habitats. Okay, it is modifying the document. So you can iterate. Every time you can iterate it to further refine it. You can add uh, your prompts and you can iterate it easily. Okay, it's working. Yeah, we will we will uh, keep the questions in the uh, after this thing. Otherwise, it will take lose a lot of time. I will give an uh, opportunity to ask questions after this presentation. I think please. Okay, it's taking a lot of time, depending upon the speed and everything. Is typing again everything it is again typing uh, restructuring the document and uh, it may stop somewhere in between depending upon the connection speed or on the server uh, load at this time if you want to continue you just type continue in the uh, what do you call this uh, window it will continue to regenerate this thing but uh, now i am iterating it again very good. Please include special emphasis on developing latest uh, uh, least developing countries and uh, establishing a system for technical assistance and financial support and further iterating that document. So uh, you can keep going on this process to uh, end up with a good document, a good output from the chat GPT. So iteration always refine the output and uh, uh, but uh, speak in that particular structure so that ChatGPT can understand you in a better way and uh, give you, yield you better results. And I, I will show you some other examples. And you can have a related question with this document because you are actually preparing a document in that segment and you need to collect information about uh, the parties, uh, the parties may be governments supporting such activities or uh, parties that may support these activities. So you can look for where the list of uh, people that can support these activities. I am actually stop generating this thing for the sake of time. And uh, adding another question, please suggest 10 countries which has active mine restoration programs who may be interested to support this resolution because you need get support uh, uh, for this resolution in the COP. So let us work on it. Here's a list of 10 countries, Australia and why Canada. Okay. And it is also showing the reason. They may support this because they are actually engaged in such activities. So there is a higher greater possibility to support this resolution. So same time, it, it, it shows that you can have related examples sort of because chat GPT can uh, keep your previous task in memory. If you want to remove the previous task from the memory, there is a button in the left side, clear conversations. It will clear all the conversation already happened. So, but it can keep it in memory, all these things keep it in memory and uh, respond accordingly. And uh, I can have some more examples. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you may be busy with preparing presentations for meetings, especially in the 
lack of time or in a very short span of time you need to prepare good presentations for communication at that time you can get the support of chat gpt to prepare a framework i can give you show you some example here you are the communication director of unccd and uh, you have already defined the role first then you have to make the presentation about unccd and i have already mentioned the subject and the role is a managing desertification okay create content for 10 slides with the five points in each please include statistics relevant international agreements important institutions use symbol and in non technical language so defend everything let us wait for the result it will give the content for all slides slide 1 slide 2 but this is not the accept, uh, accepted output because it is not giving the information but advising me on you can do like this you can do like this you can uh, uh, add some aims you can add include 197 parties and everything but i am expecting some other thing i am expecting a bulleted points for a slide where i will iterate with another command and stop generating it and iterating with another command instead of explanatory points create slide content with five bulleted points each that is my instruction see slide introduction to unccd establishment 197 parties look at the thing Okay, it will prepare a set of ten content for the ten, set of ten slides. But every time you need to recheck it, is including statistics. And uh, defining a lot of things. Then, ChatGPT is capable of uh, giving you the content then you need to make it to convert it to a slide where you can do it easily with another platform another platform using the same ai uh, facility feature and uh, i am switching it back to another platform yeah is it uh, visible now okay so here i am using a doc i'm going to doc a doc file i can put this thing here uh, a doc file here i have already done one for you my file okay one second i can put it here in the document i can copying it down from here And copying this content and putting it here in Canva. I can define the heading in bold so that it will identify it easily. With a little more okay okay challenges and opportunities call to action okay then canva document has a special feature where you can convert a document easily to a PowerPoint presentation. Just click on the convert button here, in the top right corner, click on it, and uh, click on get started because a new feature, it's creating the presentation for you. Okay. You can select something, your feature, everything. 
your presentation is almost ready and you can create the presentation. Your presentation is ready now. Okay, with 10 slides, you can modify it further by adding some graphics or adding your logo or whatever it may be. Quickly, it will convert into a presentation document. That's a very interesting feature. Uh, and uh, this is also available in uh, another third-party platform called the Chatbar, where you can use the uh, Chatbar is an online platform where you can create presentations easily with this kind of content. Okay, then, uh, and Microsoft is coming with uh, a new AI program uh, with the support from ChatGPT itself because the ChatGPT engine is working behind it and uh, Microsoft is coming with a co-pilot and that feature, they will release that feature publicly in the coming months, expected in the coming months, where the copilot is actually LLM, large language model. And this copilot button is, will be available in all Office 365 products, including the PowerPoint. When you want to make a PowerPoint on something that is just like this uh, UNC CD, you just click on the button in the copilot button in the, your PowerPoint, then it will ask for the subject. Give me the subject just like as in ChatGPT window. It will create a presentation for you instantaneously. That feature is coming. They will roll out in the coming months. Same thing. They are using the same language model they are using. And uh, if you are, uh, if you fail to log into ChatGPT, for, especially for the free account, uh, it may not work all time, depending upon the load, load on the server. It may, be, it may not be available for you at all times. At that time, you can go to bing.com slash chat because the same thing is available on Bing. Just go to bing.com, the search engine, slash chat. This chat GPT thing, same thing is available on Bing where you can use the GPT. Uh, here in the free version, you are using GPT-3 and but in the Bing version, you can use GPT-4 much better version and but the pro version they are providing gpt4 free version they are still using gpt3 so so improved version is available in bing so go to bing.com slash chat and you need to uh login with your microsoft account maybe hotmail account or some microsoft account you need to log in and uh, this will be available same window is available and uh, bing is also giving you opportunity to create uh, images from text. Just like Dali, you can create images from text and uh, that the link to join that group is bing.com slash create. Uh, you can create this thing. So we have a lot of examples uh, with ChatGPT here. And uh, let us ask for some other thing. One more example, then I will go back. That is an example. Let's uh, give you one more example. So, okay. I am giving one more example. Create a quiz with the 10 multiple choice questions about land restoration. The quiz should be easy and have some funny questions. So here, uh, mentioning the subject, the quantity, the style, and everything. See, it's creating multiple choice keys. Some may be blunder, you need to recheck it. <laughs> it can generate cues on based on uh, topics. Some may be blunder actually. No, so you need to funny. recheck all. It's very funny. <laughs> because I added two funny questions, requested for funny questions. Yes. Okay. Let me go back to my original presentation. I will show some anatomy also. Then we will open for questions. Yeah. Okay. This is a last slide. Short. You can have prompt variables. The quantity, you can have just variables, number, few, many, load, titles, articles, stories, speeches. You can do request for 
speech you can request for court scripts everything and you can defend subject person activity place or defend uh, the role of a uh, uh, author well known author and this is the anatomy of role playing uh, prompts i want to act as you define the role i will provide the instruction format you will suggest the desired output and my first request you keep the five request and this is the bottom one is shows the example and you can have a lot of variables you can act as a travel guide plagiarism checker storyteller stand up comedian magician movie investment manager anything and uh, i'm skipping these slides actually these are examples yeah look at the cues this is the anatomy for the i already showed the example create a quiz with this quantity this much define the question type 10 questions 10 multiple choice questions okay questions about the subject on land restoration and the size quantity difficulty level easy and they have extra feature funny make it funny okay this example 10 multiples is already uh, demonstrated that example and these are the variables that you can use a quiz prompt number few many five ten multiple choice two and false fill in the blanks matching short answer and subject you can define subject and you can add a difficulty you can uh, define the difficulty and this is an email prompt formula you can add write an email to you can define the recipient and you can de define the subject and add the tone the length then the purpose and this is anatomy and uh, look at the uh, example here and uh, i want to write an email my boss murali and about a recent social media campaign the tone should be formal the length would be 200 words and the purpose would be informed about that thing so it will create a good output for you and these variables can be used utilized for creating emails you can the recipient can be boss colleague friend family it will change the language accordingly depending upon and the recipient if you are writing an email to your friend it will change the language it will change the mood to change the tone then you can have the subject on which subject and you can uh, define the tone and you can define the length the short concise or this paragraphs uh, five paragraphs or in 100 words or 200 words and the purpose you can inform the purpose also it's to confirm to update request apologize congratulate or everything so these are variables and such lot of variables are there. Uh, I am stopping at this uh, point, I think. Uh, this is this can be used for translating something. And I'm stopping at this point and uh, uh, it's uh, waiting for questions. 20 minutes are there for discussion and question, I think. Uh, let us have a discussion on Thank this. you. Thank you, Sunil. Uh, extremely interesting presentation. And uh, as you can see uh, how powerful this tool is, and we are just beginning to see it is almost like an industrial revolution but like steam engine but even more than that we still have 182 participants online so if there are questions coming from them please uh, let me know but uh, there is a question from the back uh, yeah okay so time for you it's not all please use the microphone so that can you use the microphone yeah. use the yeah. microphone yeah. thank you is it better? Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to, to ask these questions to our UNCCD colleagues. So uh, in case of this, uh, for example, draft resolution, how uh, good is this content? Is there anything off about it? And um, for example, also in terms of the accuracy of the information, because uh, so for example, uh, we also try to use it for research and uh, I think it's it can give some directions for research, but it still cannot do research for us. And uh, yeah, there's still a lot of work uh, to be done. And yeah, by the way, so my name is Alexandra uh, UNESCO. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we did do a number of uh, iterations of this and uh, the quality uh, which we received is actually extremely good. And we checked with previous resolutions. And in this particular case, it was very accurate. But we did check, uh, do some other um, experiments. Uh, for example, we wanted to uh, 
um, acted as a common service director in this building and wrote an email to all the occupants in this building and it made up a lot of things. So yes, uh, <laughs> uh, so we cannot trust it fully, but in specific cases, um, it's very good. And I was actually very surprised that it would have been uh, more easy for it to find the occupants of this building than to write to actually draft a resolution in UN language, which it did very elegantly. So uh, I think in the in the AI world, there's something like difficulty is easy and easy is difficult or something like that, where computer find what is more difficult for us, very easy, and what's very easy for human beings, very difficult. So I, I, I see that trend. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so uh, thank you everyone uh, present here and thank you everyone present online because uh, I see the um, comments and Q&As here and it's very interesting. People are asking you, Sunil, to write uh, a speech in UN language. Uh, so <laughs> there are a lot of uh, interesting comments. Um, so one of the very redundant um, question that I've seen here is that uh, people are asking um, where can you find the source of the information that ChatGPT gives? Um, so if, for example, the prompt that we wrote, how can we display the source and how do we know which source are they using? Thanks. Yeah, the OpenAI is actually not revealing the data set that uh, they are using to create this thing in ChatGPT, but in GPT-4 window, in the, especially in the paid service, there's a facility to select the database. Different data sets are available. You can change the data sets in GPT-4. That facility is not available in chat GPT window. But still, they are not revealing the content of this database. Because they are actually, this may create a lot of legal issues later. Maybe here uh, in the example, you can... Uh, request chat GPT to write in the style of William Wordsworth or inside of William Wordsworth. That means they may be, they might be used uh, the system to train with the works of William Wordsworth. Otherwise it is not possible. Okay. So they might be using this thing, a lot of uh, what you call copyrighted or copylefted content to train this system, but they are currently, they are not revealing it, but uh, there is a facility available in GPT-4 or GPT-5-3 uh, uh, window where you can select a multiple database available in that thing, but they are not revealing the content at present. Thank you. Any, yes, please. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, actually, I have uh, two questions. The first question is that what is the main difference between the, the free version and the paid version of uh, the chat GPT? And my second question is like, uh, uh, we can find very useful, like the language would understand the, the expressions by the chat GPT, but can the chat, chat GPT also provide uh, like how we make it uh, like into the formulation or into the standard format of it to make it into a good shape in the world? Like when we draft the uh, contract and the, not only the content itself, but how the the format looks like which is put in the middle and which line and how many, uh, what's the, the line spaces between each rows is also very important for the UN. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I will answer the first question. Yeah, actually uh, the pro features and the free features are different actually. Uh, in the pro window, uh, it may not stop at any time. It will be available for all time. With the free window, it may not appear all time. Depending upon the server load, you will be you not may not be able to connect it. But in the pro version, you are allowed to connect at all times. First one, so the server will be ready. Second one, in the free version, you will not get features, uh, new features. Not may not be available in the free version. It is not available in the free version. Currently, they are using the chat GPT three in free version but using the upgraded version in the pro version, GPT-4. So you will get access to the new features and database in the paid version. 
and uh, that is the main differences then what's the next yeah. question yeah. The, the, the question was uh, whether a document can be formatted uh, by chat gpt to the degree that i know right right now no it is it can be it can copy edit the document it can restructure the document but if the question is about can you prepare this in you know times new format you know font in you know 1.5 space uh, this is something which i don't know if it does because i always see it coming out in one font but it may be possible i have seen that it can generate in another language so it can it can i can ask it to put this in my language or hindi or that i have seen but not as elegantly but it can be but the formatting part i have not seen but that that's not to say it cannot do it i just now not tried it formatting Thank part uh, chat gpt is incapable of doing the format but uh, the gpt4 is capable of recognizing images okay. you can ask prompt with images also but the format you need to depend on other uh, tools just like in canva the same feature is available in canva doc yeah where it, there is a facility called magic right there's a ai is working behind it in that platform you can format it okay you yeah. can select the font color everything this but inside the chat gpt currently it is not possible yeah it you know it may be possible i'm just you know thinking that i have seen chat gpt being used as a linux terminal now probably you could ask chat gpt to act as a latex terminal and say can you yeah. now act as latex and produce this text and it may be able to do it so again this prompt engineering is just four months old and it's really up to you to create something and even the and the producers ai are open ai itself don't know what capacities it have and that's why people are now very worried that I, it I may do add, it add may something. do a lot more than what it is yeah. i can add something more and you you can use this chat gpt window uh, to give program to pro, write programs especially in python suppose you want to scrap some data from the web you can ask to write a program in python to scrap some data from the web it will write a program for you build a program in a separate window but in just like a program like window it will give you but in a different format and you can also ask, uh, uh, request chat gpt to explain it for you so that it will explain all the lines in the program define all the lines in the program you can act it as a linux uh, window just like a linux computer you can command like this in linux window it will replicate a linux window for you so such capabilities are there currently thank, thank you. you right um so online um i see a good participation i would also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, miss miria tilla uh the lead of un decade of ecosystem restoration who points out a very good um point here which is um uh, one of her team members checked uh the plagiarism of a report published by chat gpt and it was 90 percent so that is something for um us if we produce a report to be mindful of um a question for Sunil is that um, if we take content from ChatGPT, um, are we obliged to give credit to them for producing it? Currently, no, because uh, they are actually using uh, publicly available data to train the model. So legally, they are unable to claim for that, what you call this, copyright. yeah, copyright format. But uh, the thing is that uh, plagiarism may happen and uh, now the thing is that plagiarism, uh, the dedicated plagiarism checkers are available in online for chat GPT content, where you can look at whether this is uh, 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 done with a chat GPT window, easily check. But it is not 100% uh, uh, successful, but people started creating such plagiarism checkers online in order to prevent the use of uh, chat GPT, such A windows. And uh, it can easily create, uh, find this, what you call the pattern of the words used in this uh, content to reveal it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, You know, in a way, the entire chat GPT is a little bit of a plagiarism because, you know, you're <laughs> pulling from there. But what I found most interesting is that there is a software available, another AI, which can take the chat GPT output and scramble it 
and create something which will not look like ChatGPT. Uh, Ch <laughs> and this is specially used for college students to create essays so that their plagiarism checkers and ChatGPT checkers will not find it. So that has already come. So now there will be something which will now check whether it has been unscrambled from ChatGPT. <laughs> so there'll be another software which will unscramble from being, being, et cetera. So it is going to be a battle where, um, you know, I think, um, you know, the, the cheats will win. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I have a question about fat checking. As we all know, sometimes ChatGPT hallucinate a lot and give false answers. Do you have any advice or suggestion on how to do the fact checking? Thank you. Actually, Sunil runs a separate training on, on fact checking, and maybe we can do another an entire um, session on fact checking. We did one um, you know, early this week. We, we didn't have time, but uh, we can do one entire session on that. Thank yeah. you. Some people are dedicating their, this thing, uh, and there's a technology called OSINT, Open Source Intelligence, where you can do it. If I could just take one more online question and then come back. Right. Yeah. Um, so the tool Murali also mentioned was Quillbot that uh, kind of distorts things from ChatGPT and makes it uh, invisible for plagiarism. But again, we have to be mindful of whether it's reading the text well or not. Um, so uh, again, a redundant question that I've been seeing here is, what is the best way of downloading or exporting results from ChatGPT? And is it any, do we have any plugins that we can use from ChatGPT? PT. Um, is it just copy paste that we do or are there some app speeches like that? Yeah, you can, you can actually copy paste from the chat GPT window. Then uh, at the same time, chat GPT is offering a uh, API where it is free, where you can apply for the API through their mail system, communication system. They will provide you with an API key and you can use this API key inside your software. Suppose if you want to do it, use it in your Excel program, you just apply for the API of ChatGPT, then you can embed it in Excel window and you can uh, seek help for doing some calculations in Excel. It will help you from that window itself where you need not to copy paste the content from ChatGPT. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Yeah, switch on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so actually it was my question about Excel. I know that Microsoft uh, already tried to enable this chat GPT into different software, including the Bing search engine okay. yeah. and also Microsoft Office. So um, do you have more information about it? And also the, the chat GPT in Bing, is that what's the difference between this one and the one in chat GPT, the chat box? Can you, can you repeat that question? Just just a yeah, little, little more. Uh, so that, so the yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The copilot is actually there. I already mentioned about the copilot, which is available in the will be available, will be available publicly in the coming months in your office products itself with a button. Actually, they are using the same language model inside the copilot, the behind the copilot, where you can use it directly. But the currently, you know that the open AI itself is supported by Microsoft and you can easily embed this API currently with the, the in your Word or Excel or in PowerPoint to do this. Yeah. The other question was about Bing, whether the ChatGPT 3, 4, which is used in Bing. Yeah, ChatGPT uh, 4 is actually GPT-4. They are using GPT-4 in Bing window. You can uh, log into Bing with your Microsoft account. It is available. Bing.com, you can go to the uh, link bing.com slash chat. Uh, then you need to log on. Same window will appear in the Bing thing. And uh, it is something different, actually. That window is not similar to that of ChatGPT window because in something different, it will, as a Bing is a search engine, as you know, and Bing will also provide uh, the other search results too, along with the research, chat GPT, chat results. Have the Another question? Yeah. Yeah. I have um, been checking this and I think it's a little bit of a marketing tool by Microsoft to unseat Google from the top 
a search engine and it is it is working mm -hmm. and so they, it is it on one side it don't want to fully replicate replicate the chat gpt window because then that will undermine chat gpt so there are, therefore it's putting some word limit etc but it is sadly a lot more powerful than google so i think eventually it will be seamless chat gpt copilot and bing will all come and the game plan i think is to undermine google which i think is the way to go unless google come out very <laughs> with its own resources and so far their effort has not been very successful actually yeah they came with the bard but it's failed. not publicly available not failed on yeah not failed. okay so um again another redundant question but this is about uh, security policy in chat gpt um, how secure is our information and what documents to avoid uploading or what information to avoid asking in chat gpt if we had a clarity on that thanks yes i you know my principle on the internet is that there is no security on the internet okay yeah, so true. if that... you if you <laughs> upload anything then it is in public domain regardless of what the site security would say so you assume that what you upload is indeed uh, what will go regarding what you can ask there is no currently there's no limit as to what you can ask but what chat gpt is allowed to answer they have a limit so if you um, ask uh, something how to make a nuclear bomb it will say i am an a program and uh, I'm not allowed to give you this answer, and maybe you should consult a psychiatrist. <laughs> Actually, it, it will say an 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 advice like that. Um, now, oh, there are many many other questions. You know, question about pornography. It is will say no. I'm not allowed to do this, but maybe you should consult a counselor, um, etc. So it's uh, it is intelligent enough to understand that this question is not acceptable, and it has been programmed. recently there was an interview with the ceo of open ai and these were the question we are asked and they said uh, you know you could actually make a bomb uh, using google search for example because there that restriction is currently not there but open ai mm -hmm. is intelligent enough to to restrict you uh, at this point of time it will not report you to the local police but uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should assume also mm -hmm. that whatever you are you know asking to chat gpt there are a lot of people watching as well so you should make it a standard assumption that there are other people watching you what you are chatting yeah there okay. is another feature that uh, you can uh, train chat gpt with your own data suppose you want to write a story in your own style you can train the window with uh, uh, multiple stories written by you but at the same time the thing is that this becomes a part of their database <laughs> automatically <laughs> that threat is there already okay thank you and then we have another question online um so uh another question that uh, we have online and also a curiosity of i think most of us is is ai here to replace us and to what extent <laughs> would that be what is the timeline that we're looking at <laughs> yeah you can answer it correctly yes you know um i have been following this for quite a while in 2013 there was a study from oxford martin school called future of employment if you are not read it i recommend you to read it now it said that 46% of all job categories will be redundant by 2030 and not only by ai but including by ai but it was also looking for robotics and uh, other new generation technologies and it's 46% of the job categories not jobs so which means if you look at an accountant or a neurosurgeon these are job categories or a driver so it could actually be 70% of actual jobs which could get redundant by 2030 it was nobody believed it at that point of time then covid came then chat gpt came and people are starting to think it may be realistic but and then ilo i think came with a question uh, with a report as well as wes came out with a report on ai and the future of jobs or future of employment there are a lot of studies on going on this one but what i liked most was a quote by my friend colleague here um, 
Georgina, is Georgina here? Yeah, yeah Georgina came with a quote saying that AI will not make accountants redundant. But if you don't know AI, then an accountant who don't know AI will become redundant. And this is exactly what's going to happen, that all of you in this room and those who are listening, if you are not clued into the new technologies which are coming, then you become redundant. But if you do learn this technology, it actually makes you even more powerful than what you are now. For a lot of segments in other um, end of the lower skill who cannot use technology to augment the, their work, they will have to be reskilled and they cannot upskill. That's the segment who should re really worry about this uh, okay. job loss. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bagaki, are you saying, uh, will you close or should I close? So um, thank you, Sunil, for this very interesting and um, inspiring session. I don't know if uh, anyone is scared of this, but my own philosophy is that it's not something we're scared about, but uh, something we should be very cognizant about. Um, yesterday, when we were having this session in, internally, I was asked, uh, would I consider it wrong if one of my staff members used ChatGPT uh, for their work? And my strong advice to them is that no, on the contrary. Recently, I did an internship uh, recruitment, and the same question which I asked the interns as a written test, I put it also to chat gpt and i you know chat gpt actually gave quite you know positive very well articulated answers uh, much better than what people gave and i i said if one of the intents i like one of the candidate actually had put up these answers i would have actually appreciated it because that also showed that they are too in tune with with times so at least in our group the philosophy is you know please use the technology we have actually purchased the the paid version so that people have access at, at all times. I want to thank you all for joining here as well as online. And our series of brown bag lunch will continue uh, in months to come. And I think now the lunch is ready outside. Uh, unfortunately, we are not allowed to bring them in. And uh, thank you once again for the time. And thank you to the those who are working the backdrop. Yeah, making feedback also. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you, you have a feedback thing somewhere, isn't it? Do you have it? Yeah, yeah I, can, I can be a uh, feedback your... form view for you. Sunil has a feedback form if you could. Yeah, uh, so that we will keep in touch. That will be very, very helpful. Thank you very much.